Thanks, Kelsey. Now we're going to throw it out to Alex Dingman with this week's Team of the Week. After a convincing 57-26 victory over the Spring Hill Broncos at DeBash, it's no surprise this week's Team of the Week is the Baldwin City Bulldogs. Now in its ninth year, DeBash is a football festival filled with fun, food, games, and prizes put on by the Baldwin High Booster Club that raises money for all the school's programs. The football wasn't so bad either, as senior do-it-all back Sam Beecher put up five touchdowns for the Bulldogs. Baldwin High dropped 39 points on the unexpecting Broncos before they were finally able to put a touchdown on the board. Sophomore Josh Hoffman punched in two TDs of his own later in the game to give the Bulldogs their second victory of the year. The win brings the team to 2-1 and one for the season. Next week, they play host to a tough DeSoto team Friday at Liston Stadium. Congratulations, Bulldogs, for being this week's Team of the Week, and good luck on Friday. Here's a look at our final freshman for this week's show. Hi, my name is Gloria Tanmo. I'm a freshman from Arizona. Um, I'm a pre-med major. I came to Baker on a basketball scholarship, so I play basketball here. Um, I'm looking to do big things with the team. We're looking good. And I am involved in Mungano. Um, yeah, my roommate is Ray Lynn Stewart. She's from Missouri. And we're in the top floor of room 75 of Irwin Hall. So I don't know, come visit us. We have the Wii, the PS2, like a bunch of video games and movies. Um, yeah, we have a lot of fun. Um, yeah, there's really cool people here. Uh, I met a lot of cool people through classes, at social gatherings. Um, the teachers are really nice. They really get to know you. They're very personal, and I like that because had it been like a big lecture hall kind of atmosphere, you know, professors know you like a number. They're just, you're just another number in the class. So it's nice to get to know the professors and have them know your name back. And um, I'm having a lot of fun. It's definitely like a, not like a culture shock, but the weather will be different. Everybody's telling me I'm not gonna make it through the winter because I'm from Arizona where like the coldest temperature is like 50 degrees. And I've never seen snow before, so I'm kind of excited about that. Um, maybe save some and bring back home. Huh. We're going to take a quick commercial break, but stay tuned, because up next we have our sports guys on location. And we're back. This is the sports segment of Orange Line. Alex Dingman here with Chris Smith. We're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about the uh, Baker University football team to begin with. A very devastating loss this past Saturday to Lindenwood. 25-21, to a game where Baker University was winning 21-6 to at one point in the third quarter. 14-6 to at half was really dominating that team, Lindenwood being, what, ranked 11th at that time. Right. But uh, we were definitely the more talented team on that day. But that fourth quarter was uh, definitely one to forget. Uh, block punt, a few too many holding penalties, and ended up being a four-point loss. And that's when it's going to go down in the box score. But anybody who was there knows that the Wildcats were the better team on that day. Yeah, the nationally ranked Lions really put together a rally in the fourth quarter. But Baker really dominated every facet of the game for three quarters. Uh, offensively, defensively, special teams. We had one get away with uh, one get away from us on the block punt, but Mac Brown had a stellar day, 325 yards passing with a touchdown. Richie Bryant, 102 yards on the ground with two touchdowns, and then three receivers all had over 80 yards. Uh, Brett Woods, Brad Fawcett, and Richie Bryant on one 84-yard reception. So, really a pretty productive day on offense. Defense had a couple key red zone stands. It was really a pretty good football game. It's just a heartbreaking loss. Yeah, definitely, and you know. Even with that offense, Grossner doesn't really think that the offense has gotten to the point where it really needs to be. Um, it's not hitting on all cylinders right now. There's a lot of firepower on this offense. Tons of weapons. It's, it's showing right now. Uh, this is a tough loss. However, he mentioned to me he didn't want this uh, team from Linwood to beat them twice, as in getting in their heads for this following game on Saturday against Benedictine. This is a, an away game, 2 o'clock kickoff there so down in Atkinson. Winnable. But definitely a winnable ball game. For Baker University, they got to go out and play like they did against Lindenwood and get that W. This was a tough loss, but uh, just you know, need a few more, a few less turnovers and a few less penalties. Um, however, some of those calls there in the fourth quarter, it uh, it got a little out of hand, especially that last holding call that really, um, you know, screwed us. But at this point, that's last week. We're going to move on and uh, see if we can't get something rolling here and keep our offense going. That defense too. Coach Thorne's got to be happy with how his team was doing. I mean, holding Lindenwood to 25 when uh, not all those points were legitimate, one of them coming off a block punt. Uh, definitely a good job by the Wildcats D. 
All right, well, best of luck to those fellows in Atchison. Let's move to the lower ranks now. Baldwin City High School, a convincing victory over Spring Hill at DeBash. Yep. You want to talk about it a little, Ding? Sure. The other football team in Baldwin City had their first home game this past weekend on Friday night, and they won in convincing fashion 57-26. to This after coming off a tough loss to Gardner 47-7. to Gardner, one of the best teams going right now. It's got to be one of the best teams in 5A for sure. Certainly but. have to be one of the state favorites, that Gardner team. A couple of real athletes back there, Division I caliber athletes. Most so. definitely. But now Baldwin High is 2-1. and one. They're playing at home against DeSoto on Friday. Check that game off, 7 o'clock kickoff. Very exciting. On KMBU um, FM. Most definitely. Uh, but the uh, Baldwin High Bulldogs feature four rushing touchdowns, one passing. I mean, he's up there, Heisman candidate for sure. MVP. Uh, Josh Hoffman had a couple touchdowns. Logan Schiller had a touchdown. Uh, they forced, I believe, four turnovers from that. Just great push from their offensive line the entire way. Mike Berg was really happy about how they bounced back after that loss. And Bulldogs are looking good again. You know, I was a little worried about them after that Gardner game. But, I mean, that's just a real tough team. They came back and played a team that is for a legitimate team in their conference and uh, in their league, I guess. And they totally dominated them. So they'll see if they can keep it going. Another interesting note about Baldwin High. Props to the freshmen. There were seven freshmen that dressed that game. Coach Berg said, I'm going to do everything I can to get you in the game. And with a 39-point lead before Spring Hill was even able to get on the board, all seven of those freshmen saw varsity PT. So good for those guys. Let's move on to some men's and women's soccer. Disappointing weekend at the Azusa uh, in Laguna Beach. Excuse me, men's soccer fell to Azusa Pacific, who was, of course, the defending national champions, three to zero, uh, and a tough loss. More discipline problems for the men's soccer team. Another red card early in the match really set the tone, having to play down with ten men again. When keeping the, it real goes wrong, right there. When keeping it is. real goes wrong for the second game in a row on the women's side, played a very good Point Loma Nazarene team, ranked number two in the country last week. One of the only undefeated teams remaining in the NAIA for women's soccer. They fell 2-1, to one, but Coach Hauser said that uh, they played extremely well and really good on defense. They gave up two free kicks, so mm -hmm. got to work on those set pieces at practice, but the flow of play was very, very strong. And so, uh, touche to the women's soccer team this week. Yeah, the women's soccer team seems to really be getting things going. I mean, obviously, they did lose this game, but um, from what I hear, they played a lot better than they have been, communicating a lot better and playing more as a cohesive unit, so hopefully they can keep that going when they uh, play some competition that's probably not up to the same caliber as what they saw uh, this past weekend. Absolutely. Well, one final note about the women's volleyball team. Congratulations on winning the Mid-American Nazarene Tournament. It took five games in the final, but they came back with convincing 15-9 victory in the final game. Congratulations to them. You've already seen a lot in the show already about volleyball, so we won't elaborate. We'll kick it back to the studio. Thanks for that look at sports, Alex and Chris. We hope you enjoyed this week's show on Orange Line. Be sure to stay tuned next week where we're going to have more great stories about Baker University. I'm Zach Rocky. And I'm Kelsey Epperson.